Okay, we are live. So, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Hello. Hello. I am not Pastor Paul. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Pastor Paul is at a uh, pastor's prayer retreat, and um, he is uh, gone for a couple days. He'll be back tomorrow. So, I'm filling in. I'm the substitute teacher. Uh, but we're just going to do prayer tonight. We're not going to read Ezekiel, okay? Um, because I am not uh, as nearly as well versed as Paul is in the study of Ezekiel. So we'll leave that to the professional. But um, I do have the list of prayer requests, and I also have the prayer mobilization line. So we'll definitely be doing uh, that together tonight. Um, I don't know how to tell on here if I, oh, okay, I see now. I don't think any, anybody is watching with us yet. It'll have a little eyeball top corner. Yeah. Okay. Um. Facebook is giving me a warning that we have low stream quality. Um, hi, Jane. Hi, Diane. Let me know if um, if you guys are having trouble with the video so that um, I can probably just not address it because I don't know what I would do. <laughs> so, <laughs> but let me know anyway. <laughs> That's terrible. But, um, hi, Bethany. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely coming up. We're live. I just don't know if the quality is very good because Facebook gave me a little, um, yeah, it's saying action needed. Key frame rate too low. I don't even know what I would do. I have absolutely no idea. So it's, the video is going to be a little slow. But anyway, sorry about that. Um, so tonight um, I'm gonna, we're going to do prayer. And the prayer mobilization line and then I will pray and then I'll leave it open for like a minute or two so that you guys can also pray if you'd like to um, and then it's basically gonna be it it's gonna be short and sweet tonight so um, Jane is mentioning a prayer request uh, right now praise um, Edgar's sister's surgery went well uh, so we will continue to pray for recovery I do actually have her on my list. Uh, uh, she had knee, knee surgery yesterday. So we're also going to be praying for Daryl for his um, foot pain and uh, the other physical challenges that he has. Um, Charlene's friend's son, Stephen, who was burned. Mm -hmm. uh, also for Jim and Carol's um, friend, uh, Jody, whose husband passed away. Joni. Oh, Joni. Okay, I misunderstood Paul and his son. Um, that's my son, but that's okay. And, um, and then also Amy. Yeah, and then we'll continue to pray for the camps. Um, I do have one unspoken prayer request um, from somebody who is undergoing some tests right now. Uh, we're also going to pray for um, Barbara Dalbo uh, for her eyes. We're going to pray that she does not need surgery. Um, we also will be praying for baby Troy. Um, also, Venus's aunt Gloria Hess, who is in the hospital recovering. Um, Diane had mentioned um, that Ruth Ann needs prayer uh, for her leg. She will be having surgery um, for the uh, fracture. And also, we'll pray for her son, George, because he's very worried. Um, and then we will also continue to pray for um, Tony and Wilma because their uh, niece passed away. And, um, you know, so obviously they are uh, mourning her loss and um, her family. Uh, of course, that's a tremendous loss. Um, we'll also be praying for Trudy's friend, Mark, 
who is having surgery, and also um, Pastor Ralph, a pastor um, in a church in Bridgeton who is uh, now on chemo for cancer. So it's just as rare. Some very rare form of, I leukemia. think, lymphoma, but it might have been leukemia. It was either leukemia or lymphoma. Aren't those both blood and bone marrow cancers? Yes. Do you know if Pastor Paul got any update on William who's down in Florida? Will they have the trade put in? I do not think that he has any updates on Liam. Do you think he's he didn't survive mention. the cancer? I have no idea, honey. I'm, I, I don't know. I yeah. don't know him personally. I just want to raise a point. Sure. Regarding Damar, the football player. Yes. He went home today. God bless him. Oh, did he really? Yes. Yeah. I knew that he had gotten transferred to um, the hospital in um, Buffalo. Well, what's his injury? He, he had a cardiac arrest. Twice. Oh, he flatlined. Oh, here's a pen. Where's Ty B to work? Because he was too short to fly flat line. <laughs> there was a movie about that 22 years ago. Very good. It was a dog with scissors. And they were doing, they were meant, they were, they were like a dream meet on purpose. Yeah. Okay. And then you said um, Joni is mm -hmm. the name of the person. Okay. Mm -hmm. Joni Brzezowski. We'll go with Joni. Yeah. <laughs> Close enough. Yeah, Joni will do. We, Jesus knows who I was just going to say that. God knows who we're praying for. Yeah, exactly. If they don't, her husband's going to have to help him. He's up there. That's yeah, okay. he's up there. Well, yes, but it's, yes, I'm I sure he'll help out. I know he was a believer. Aww. He professed it on Facebook a lot. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Um, so for, uh, are there any other prayer requests that you guys? Yes, Kay. Oh, I love, yeah. Your usual. I This is a friend? Side by side. No, I can't tell you. It's okay. It's spoken with his lips. Side by side. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be having some uh, tests on the MRI of my eye orbit next week. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Uh, anything else that you guys can think of before we um, go into the prayer mobilization email? Okay. Well, let's read about Portugal. Um, the, the Church of the Nazarene began work in Portugal in 1973. Portugal is a southern European country on the Iberian Peninsula bordering Spain. It has a population of approximately 10.3 million people, and the official language is Portuguese. The Church of the Nazarene in Portugal has experienced some difficulties in attracting younger generations. I think we know how that feels here. Mm -hmm. However, the Holy Spirit is still moving and creating opportunities for the gospel to be spread. Um, the Church of the Nazarene in Portugal currently has 957 members, 18 fully organized churches, and one not yet fully organized church, and four district licensed and 20 ordained ministers. Their prayer requests are for an awakening in local churches for evangelism, discipleship, and ministerial call. They would also like us to pray for the missionaries working for the kingdom in Portugal. Pray for God to fortify the churches, intensifying their investment in new pastors and new churches who will assume local and district responsibilities. And pray for spiritual strengthening for the churches to walk in unity and love. 
Uh, they also have a number of praises. We praise the Lord for the open doors of opportunity we are seeing. We praise God for the, uh, for the workers who are engaged in our local churches through Nazarene Missions International. And we praise God for the faithfulness of our people. Um, they have a story in here. Um, a Nazarene doctor in Portugal has built nearly 100 highly detailed miniature scenes from the Bible in hopes to create a museum around them eventually. That's cool. I don't know. That's a great question. It doesn't say. Huh. Alexandra Sousa Gill began building miniature, oh, maybe it's going to say, began building miniature Bible scenes during the pandemic to relax from her stress and grow her faith in Christ. Although Gill gave her life to Christ many years ago at the invitation of a friend during the pandemic, she began attending the Church of the Nazarene in Cascais. When I entered, I found incredible I, I found incredible the way of praying and the fellowship was different, she said. And little by little, I started to go more often. Every time my friend would go, I would go until I started going by myself. It was with the pandemic that I then found the Church of the Nazarene. During the peak of the pandemic, the Portuguese government relaxed some rules to allow people to attend church services in person. Smaller churches with limited space asked members to sign up in advance to attend worship. Thanks to its large sanctuary, the Church of the Nazarene in Cascais um, accommodated many more people. This was very important for me, Gil said. During my adolescent years, I lived in a country where churches were banned and people could not worship together. Since then, it has been very important for me to uh, be together to worship and be at church. Gil has always liked making handicrafts. Her faith is what inspires her artistry. So when she volunteered to teach Sunday school, her intense Bible study led her to build miniature three-dimension Bible scenes from the Old to the New Testament. Building the dioramas was also a way to occupy sleepless nights which she began struggling with sometime in 2015. Initially, the first thought that came to my mind was that it was crazy that a woman with grown children would be doing something like this, but it was my way to relax and disconnect. Her excitement around recreating these Bible scenes grew so much that even when she could have gone to sleep quickly, she stayed awake to design. Gil buys miniature pieces of furniture, characters, and plants, she creates the backgrounds by cutting up magazines or printing images and paintings. Some items she must make from scratch. For example, for David's harp, she used dental floss. <laughs> to bring more light into the scenes, Gil also learned how to wire LED lights in the boxes. Oh, wow. I wonder if she used shoe boxes. Like, do you remember how like kids oh, like yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, our, yeah. you know yeah. our, uh, English classes? You know, he'd read a book and make a diorama of uh, our favorite oh. scene. That was like. Those were the best projects in school. God helped every step of the way, she said, even in finding small props that now are part of a scene made a difference. The characters can be wearing sneakers or a hat, and this was because I wanted to bring the Bible to the modern days as it is still alive. In July 2022, Gil held an exposition of her miniatures at the Nazarene Church. Many visited and were able to see how these miniatures are made and learn learn more about the Bible. So far, Gil has created 40 miniatures of the Old Testament and 50 miniatures of the New Testament. Oh my goodness. She also painted three cities that were part of Jesus' life, Bethlehem, Jerusalem, and Capernaum. In addition, Gil has built scenes that illustrate Jewish celebrations for a total of 105 dioramas. That's so cool. Oh, I want to see her basement. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Too much clutter. <laughs> in, the <laughs> in the future, Gil is considering establishing a small Bible museum to have all the miniatures on permanent display. She hopes this would bring the Bible to life for visitors and inspire people to put their own God-given gifts into practice. That's fun. Um... Okay, so Venus is here, and she has a prayer request. 
Uh, she says, I'm asking for prayers for my leg. I had a Baker cyst burst and I'm in some pain and a praise that the procedure I had done last January is healed well. That is a praise, but we will certainly um, pray for uh, that pain from your cyst. Maybe I'll see if Avery will start making things with his leg again. That's a great idea. And then we'll also pray, um, of course, for the pastors that are at the retreat, including Pastor Paul. And um, I'm really praying that this is a good time of just refreshment and relaxation and fellowship with other pastors. It's mm -hmm. so it's so very important for, you know, pastors to have that opportunity to be fed the way that we get to be fed, you know, be yeah. on Sundays. Be so boys for God. Okay, mm -hmm. mom, I think. Exactly. I mean there are girls there too, but it's it is a lot of boys. Yeah. Uh, I don't believe that Pastor Tom went, but I don't know that for sure. Um, but yeah, the he looks forward to the retreat every year. He's he's gone quite a few times, and he he really enjoys it. It's always it's always in January, um, and uh, yeah, they need refreshing. They do, they really do. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay. Uh, any anything that you want me to add to the prayer list guys before I start in prayer okay and like I said I will pray I'll go through the list and then if there's anything that you can think of that I missed or if anything comes to you while I'm praying please feel free to you know join in at the end um, but then I'll close you know after a minute or so um, you know no pressure just be a time of silent prayer as well if you guys prefer that's fine okay all right let's pray father i thank you so much for this time that we again have this uh, this evening together and um, i pray for uh, all those who are um, here in person or over uh, the computer and i also pray for those in our church family who were not to, uh, able to join us tonight, um, I pray that you'll just bless our church family very, very richly. Um, I pray for all those who are currently um, either sick or injured. Um, I also pray for those who are uh, grieving loss. Um, and I just pray that you'll be close to each one of those people uh, I do pray specifically for Daryl um, as he is um, mm -hmm. suffering from pain uh, and also uh, from instability. I just pray that you will continue to um, touch his body and give him relief. I also pray for Charlene's um, friend's son, Stephen, uh, who was burned. I pray that you will heal his body and also uh, be with his son um, as Stephen is his uh, primary caregiver. I just pray that you will um, be with them, give them peace, and I pray that you'll provide people who will um, be able to help them uh, where needed. I pray for um, for uh, Joni um, as she is grieving the loss of her husband, um, and also for uh, Jim and Carol. Um, I pray that. Um, for everybody who is uh, close uh, to, to their family, Lord, I pray as they grieve that they will feel you close to them as well. I pray for Amy as she is in cancer treatment and is having pain. I pray, Lord, that you will provide relief from that pain. Um, and I also pray that her cancer treatment um, will be very effective. I pray for the camps um, as they also uh, have physical challenges, and I just 
I thank you for um, for their faith, and I pray for a miracle in their situation as well. Um, I pray for the unspoken prayer request uh, that we have tonight um, for this person who is having testing done. I pray that those test results will be um, will be good, and I pray, Lord, that the, they'll also get the answers that they're looking for. I pray for Barbara, uh, for her eyes. I pray that she will not need surgery and that the doctors will be able to come up with a different treatment plan that will be effective to avoid th another procedure. I pray for Edgar's uh, sister, Jean. Um, I thank you that she had uh, a good surgery, that it went well, and that um, she continues to recover. I pray that she will not have too much pain. Um, I also pray for baby Troy. Um, as we have prayed for Troy for a long time, and um, he's always on our minds, and uh, we just pray, Lord, that you will um, give the doctors the wisdom necessary to uh, come up with a treatment plan for him, um, and uh, I pray that he will have improved quality of life. I pray that his kidney function will improve, um, and I also pray that the many tests that um, they've had to uh, perform on him, Lord, that it will provide the answers that are necessary for them to know how to proceed. I pray for Venus's um, Aunt Gloria as she is in the hospital recovering um, from her illness, and I thank you, Father, that they were able to catch this whole situation before um, before it was even more extreme. And Lord, I pray that she will be able to leave the hospital soon. I also pray for Ruth Ann as uh, she is facing surgery on her leg. I pray that that surgery will go well um, and that she will be able to uh, return home quickly to be with George. And I just pray that you will be able to settle George's mind um, as uh, he's very, very worried. I pray for Tony and Wilma as they grieve the loss of their niece, Terry, um, and for everybody else who is close to Terry, Lord, I just pray that you will comfort them and give them peace um, as uh, they miss her so much. I pr pray for Trudy's friend, Mark, um, for his surgery and also uh, for his salvation. And Lord, I pray that the surgery goes well and that this may even open a, a door um, and that um, Trudy and other Christian friends that uh, he has around him, Lord, I pray that um, that this will help him to see um, see your goodness and, and uh, see your hand on his life. I pray for Pastor Ralph as he's currently um, on chemo. I pray that those treatments are very effective. I pray that um, the side effects will be minimal and that he will um, come through these treatments very well. I also pray for um, Damar Hamlin. I thank you, Lord, that he was able to be released from the hospital. I also thank you for the testimony that he is going to be able to have. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm so thankful, Lord, that through the last week or so of all this, that many, many uh, Christians and people of faith have publicly um, prayed and stated um, their faith uh, and really were able to witness for you um, during uh, this very tragic um, event. And we just, we're, we're thankful that he's okay. Um, I also pray for Darlene's family um, and I just pray that you'll continue to always have a hand on them and um, you know that situation better than any of us do, Lord. And I just I pray for them. I also pray for um, Kay. I pray for the test that she's having done. I also pray for this, uh, this person who needs a refrigerator. I pray that somebody will come forward and is able to provide a refrigerator for them. Um, sometimes when we least expect it, Lord, something like that happens. And, 
um, we know that you always provide. I pray for Carol as she has uh, this MRI. I pray that it will provide the answers that the doctors are looking for, and I pray that um, this testing will be what is necessary um, uh, for, uh, for her condition. I also pray for Venus's leg. I pray that you'll relieve this pain. And um, I also thank you so much that over the last year, uh, the surgery that she had has healed um, her leg. And, um, and I, I just thank you so much that, um, that over this year, uh, she's had so much improvement. Uh, lastly, I'm gonna pray for the pastor's prayer retreat. I thank you for this time that the pastors in our district were all able to, um, to get together and to have some personal reflection time, but also some corporate worship together um, and fellowship. I thank you so much for the pastors in our district. I pray that they will um, they'll know how appreciated they are in our church families. And I pray that this will give them some refreshment and renewal that is needed so that they can come home and just that they're ready to um, have some uh, fresh ideas and just for them to feel um, that renewal necessary after, after a very busy holiday season. Um, and uh, I thank you again for this church family, Lord, and I uh, just want to um, give them this time to uh, lift up their own praises and prayers. thank you again for this evening. I thank you so much that um, we just have this incredible church family. Um, I want to take a moment to pray for the ministries that we have in our church. I pray for um, our children's ministry. I thank you for the growth that we have had over the last uh, six or seven months. Um, I thank you so much that you have um, brought these children into, into our building and given us the opportunity to love them and teach them and show them your love, um, feed them, and, uh, and also give them the opportunity to play and uh, make friends. I just pray that you'll continue to use that ministry um, and continue to grow the children's ministry here in our church. Um, I also pray for our food pantry and I thank you again for that opportunity to serve <coughs> so many people right here in, in the Pennsville area and I pray that you will continue to grow that ministry as well. I pray that um, we will be able to reach more and more families each month and that we will have the resources necessary um, to uh, to, to grow and to touch as many families um, as you bring to us. And I thank you so much for your faithfulness with the food pantry that we have always been able to feed the people who come to our door. Um, and I pray that uh, that will be a blessing to every single person who we meet, Lord. And I pray that they'll just see a little bit of Jesus every time they come here and um, I thank you, Father, for the volunteers who are willing to give up their time and energy and money 
in order to make the food pantry a success. And I just pray that that will continue to, um, to grow and to please you. And uh, I thank you also for our men's and women's ministry. Um, and I, I pray that uh, that will also um, uh, touch the, the people who attend. And um, I also pray for our um, prayer time that will be happening next week. And um, Lord, I thank you for that opportunity to reach out to people who aren't necessarily always able to come to our building. And I just thank you for, um, for that ability for us to go and see them. And I pray that we'll be able to um, shine a little light and uh, bring some comfort and um, for, for those who are lonely right now. Um, I just pray that you'll bless that time, Lord. So I thank you again uh, for this evening. And um, please uh, be with us tonight as we um, finish the night together, Lord. I pray that um, you will continue to keep us safe and healthy. And um, as we prepare for Sunday, Lord, um, I pray that you'll bring us back then. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, Eric just came on. Hi, Eric. Um, what was that? Oh, oh, great. Reverend Gordon just started that. Oh, okay. Do you want to do you want to read it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is pretty long. We've got time. It's only seven o'clock. <laughs> well, great. Well, really? Oh, that is so nice. That is really nice. I like that. Well, I'm going to turn off Facebook. You guys are welcome to stick around and I got cat to chat. I got cat to help. Which is I would like to show his cat outfit again. <laughs> and um, yeah, for those of you on Facebook, thanks so much for joining us. And uh, I hope you guys have a great night. Going all in Canada. That's right. I can't do a full chat, but I can't really use it because it's broke. Yeah. Yeah.